think about the last time you had a really big pasta meal. I don't want to be doing down dog after that. That's how you can usually tell meals are too heavy. So if you can do downward dog after a meal, that was the right amount of food. Yeah. So I probably won't eat for the next three days and then I'll try downward dog and we'll see if I can hang on. Yeah, does that work? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 93 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm so happy you're here. You are going to love today's podcast episode. And if your eyes just wandered over there and wondered what that is, that's my cat. Yeah, we just left him there during the interview. We hope you enjoy him. He's wonderful. Anywho, I'm really excited about today's episode because it touches on something that's really important to me as an entrepreneur and as a coach is your health, right? Because I don't know how your business can be successful if you don't understand that your health is your number one asset. And today's guest, Tanessa Shears, really helps us understand that. Tanessa Shears is a health consultant and she is also the host of the Becoming Limitless podcast. Now she has a real passion for helping entrepreneurs optimize their health, their sleep, minimize their stress, understand what makes them feel productive, And basically just have their bodies work for them in such a way that they can do amazing things inside of their entrepreneurial journey. Sounds great, right? This is perfect, you guys. If you have been feeling like you have brain fog, if you've been waking up in the middle of the night, oh wait, that's me. If you feel like you have not been able to kind of get a handle on your health in a way that would really support your business, today's podcast is absolutely going to help. One of the things I would love you to listen for is why we do wake up in the middle of the night. That is towards the end. I absolutely loved it. I was so grateful to her for that tip because it's something I truly struggle with. Sometimes I just get up at three and just keep going because why bother, right? She helped me understand why that's happening and what we can do to fix it. You guys know how important food is to me, right? She really goes into understanding how food affects your body, what it's doing to your body and how you can make small tweaks here and there, my favorite, to help your food optimize your health and your ability to think and function at your maximum capacity, which is where we all want to be. And one of the things I love about Tanessa is she really works with her clients to the point that in eight hours, they can get more done than a lot of people get done in weeks. And I believe it. You've had, you've been in the zone, right? Like you've had those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm on fire. This is a way to learn how to do that a little bit more often. And finally, I hope you really listen in, in this crazy, peaceful, calm world that we're living in. I hope you listen in for her tips on how to handle stress and when our brain is functioning and when we can help it relax and how to actually get that done. Like real actionable stuff, you guys. It's so cool. I think we swore. So make sure you pop in your earphones if you have little ones running around. If not, let's get to it and have some fun. Enjoy. Tanessa, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm super excited to have you here today. And I got to tell you, I'm like way intrigued about our conversation today. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I love talking about all the nerdy things that help us with our business. (laughs) (laughs) Nerdy things. I don't know. Do we call it a nerdy thing? It sounds like a super like amazing sci-fi, awesome brilliant, brainy thing that we should know about when it comes to our businesses. Okay. That made it sound cooler. Let's go with that. (laughs) I tried, I just made it up right then, but it sounds so cool. So, oh my gosh, can we just start right out of the gate and like, let's go to town here. What the heck is biohacking and what do you see its role in the future of entrepreneurship? Like, how does this even help us? And just go because I don't even know what it is. You have to fill us in. It sounds incredible. Yeah. When I first heard the word biohacking, I was like, this sounds illegal. Is this okay? Like, I don't, is this something I want to be dipping my toe in right now? But biohacking, think of it like this. It's like health optimization, but cooler. Essentially you're changing not only your internal environment, but the environment around you so that you have more focus and energy and longevity and wellness and all of that. But the way I like to do biohacking is I like to do it by always looking at my return on investment. And that's something as entrepreneurs, we understand is return on investment. We don't have a ton of time to be putting into all these little things that we could be doing and should be doing. I want to know what's going to get me the most bang for my buck. So with biohacking specifically, if I'm looking at like, if I make this specific change, change to my sleep, how is my brain performing tomorrow? If I make this specific change to my bedroom, is this making me more creative because I'm getting a better sleep? Like I'm always looking for that return. And when we talk about the future of entrepreneurship, it's because at the end of the day, 
once we all have similar skills, like we're, we're copywriters, we, you know, create things, we make content, whatever that is. Once we have that, what comes down to it is that competitive edge you can get is by how amazing your brain can perform. Mm. So if my brain is operating at 90% of peak capacity, I am focused. I can get more done in my day than some people can get done in a couple of days. Yeah. If I can do that, that is my competitive edge because I can be more creative. I grow faster. I have more um, like interesting ideas that are solving bigger problems and the quality of the problem we solve tells us how good our business is going to do. So that's why I like to thinking of biohacking as like, if I can get my brain up leveled, that is my competitive edge. Okay. But so what is the, <laughs> are we literally hacking our biology? Cause I mean, okay. So many things in what you said, my brain went too fast. Number one. Yes. Let's have our brains performing because I think you're absolutely right. We all, I think we've all experienced those moments where it's like, you're just like on fire thinking, going, going, oh my gosh. And you, you're like unstoppable, right? I think we've all kind of had that peak performance moment as entrepreneurs, right? Where it's just super cool. And then the times when it's not, because we just can't seem to think. But when we talk about biohacking, are we literally talking about hacking our biology? Like, is that actually what that means? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, even if we just use sleep as an example, you have different phases your brain goes through while you're asleep. So I know, for example, if I want to have more dream sleep because it makes me better able to manage my moods and be more creative, I know that if I eliminate all the light from my room in those early morning hours, hmm. I get more dream sleep. So essentially I'm using a hack, which is a shortcut to more efficiency. So I'm literally hacking my biology, my biology, meaning how my brain acts during the night, during sleep by altering the environment, whether that be something I put on for glasses or, you know, a set of window shades that I use. So that's, it's literally what you said, you're hacking your biology. Wow. That's yeah. really cool. Now, are each of us really, really different or are there some things that tend to be more universal? There's a bit of each. So okay. some things I find that like right off the bat, I know that this, this, and this will definitely help you start sleeping better. Your energy will be better. You'll wake up feeling refreshed. You won't feel so drained at two to 3 PM in the afternoon. Those things I know are for the majority of people, but then there are some things in biohacking that are super specific. And I'll give you an example is food. Okay. Some people do well with certain food and not others. So a good example is when I eat broccoli and quinoa, I get really hollow stomach pains. Those oh are supposed gosh. to be healthy okay. foods. Yeah. So if I hadn't have been paying attention to that myself, I would have gone on putting broccoli on all my food thinking I was doing a good thing. So we really have to pay attention in some areas. And a lot of it has to do with looking at the feedback we're getting, not only from our brains, like how do my feeling? But in biohacking, we're really interested in data. So I often wear different tracking devices, whether that be the ring I'm wearing, which tracks literally everything, or the wristwatch I'm wearing, which tracks the rest of the things. I'm always looking at that feedback and what's working. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You reminded me, like I have my, my, my Fitbit I wear all the time. And I literally was just having a conversation this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, look, I got like zero REM last night. No wonder I'm spacey. And there's so much of that. Sometimes when I get the data back, I'm not sure what to do with it or how to like course correct. So I think it's really cool that you just shared the idea of dreaming is really watching that early morning light. Mm. That's so cool. Cause that makes me feel like, I don't know, tell me if I'm crazy, Tanessa, but if you ever notice on the weekends, like if you get up and you have like a cup of coffee or you have a breakfast and you take another nap, I know all of us with small children, it's been a long time, but you would take a small nap and have like the craziest dreams. Am I crazy or does that happen? Yeah, I think it just depends too on how deep of a sleep and how fast you enter the different phases of sleep because what you experience is a sleep cycle. And normally our brains go through deep sleep and then into dream sleep. Mm. And then normally because our naps are shorter, we wake up in the middle of those dreams. And when we wake up in the middle of our dreams, that's when our brain is like, holy, I just remember everything that was going on. Okay. Thanks for that. You totally just cleared up the weekend crazy dream thing for me because I was like, what is that? Oh my gosh. Okay. So tracking, understanding the data that's coming back, but also just listening. Right. So for you, like broccoli, I like how you describe it. You said like a hollow feeling. Oh yeah. It was like, it was like, I was starving that hollow feeling. And I was oh, like, wow. I just ate what is going on. This isn't normal. <laughs> that's so interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to pay attention to that for the next couple of weeks. I want to see like what, like what makes me feel that way. That's so cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit now about brain fog, because mm. I know this is a real thing and I'm sure you read this book too, but there was a book I read a while ago called wheat belly. 
Mm -hmm. um, about the power of gluten, like how it's one of the few substances aside from heroin that can permeate certain membranes in our brain. And um, the author was talking about how if he would eat bread, he, he just immediately, like 15 minutes after eating bread, he could feel the brain fog set in. And I thought that was really interesting. I haven't personally experienced that, but I know other people have as well. What is brain fog? And like, how does it affect us? Like, why does it make us feel so crappy? <laughs> Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because brain fog is not one of those things that you can walk into your doctor's office and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's brain fog because it's Why? more like that's so true. Yeah. It's, it's more like a collection of symptoms. So if you're thinking things mm. like, oh, a good one is like, if I sit down and I'm going to go write an email and all of a sudden I'm like, who am I writing this email to? Those little facts that you should know slip your mind. That's like, oh, that doesn't normally happen. Or I get a pressure in the front of my head where it literally feels like there's a cloud sitting in there and I can't think very clearly and it feels clunky and awkward and I kind of get confused and I'm distracted easily. So like if I'm trying to like sit down and do something productive and all of a sudden my email goes off and then five minutes later, I've bought three things on Amazon and I've made an Instagram <laughs> post. I have what? no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just that. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just that inability to really stay focused with it. So that's what brain fog is. But when we're looking at what the heck causes it, we're looking at where is inflammation in our body. So we've all heard of the word inflammation, probably more so related to like, if you sprained your ankle, like we know red, swollen, heat, all signs of inflammation, but that actually happens inside other places in our body. And like you said, in our gut, like you read that book, Wheat Belly, some people have sensitivities to gluten and mm -hmm. some people have uh, sensitive sensitivities to other foods. And, and it comes in a bunch of different spectrums. Like some people have a mild reaction and some people have a major reaction. But the problem is if we are eating foods that are creating inflammation in the lining of our gut, mm -hmm. that is when things start going wrong because food that's not supposed to be entering our blood and, you know, fecal matter and all of that kind of stuff gets in there. Our body's like, what is that? We send mm -hmm. off an immune response and inflammation happens. And here's the crazy thing. Our gut and our brain are very closely connected. So if you think of it as your gut literally being on fire with inflammation, if we're eating a lot of poor food, our brain is on fire. That is when we're getting brain fog and we're looking at where it's coming in and hands down three out of three times. It is somewhere between a poor quality sleep. It is lack of proper whole food nutrition, and it is stress that is out of control. Those are the biggest causes of inflammation in our body. Wow. I never... I've heard about the brain gut connection before, but I've never thought of it quite like if your gut's on fire, your brain's on fire. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of liar, liar, pants on fire, but it's that same idea that like, like you can't work at your best if part of your body's not functioning the way that it should be. I mean, are there, cause I know every physical body is different, mm -hmm. right? We know that that's true. So are there like, are there specific foods for different people that tend to do this? Like you were talking about the broccoli and the quinoa, or is it like we as entrepreneurs should never eat X or we want to make sure we add in Y? Is that just impossible for us to say because everybody's so different or are there some usual suspects? There are definitely usual suspects. Now there's obviously, like you said, not one path that fits each person um, all the same. However, there are two approaches that I like to go about it. One is more of, let's call it the aggressive way. If you're just like, let's go, I'm willing to be uncomfortable. And what I ask my clients to do is, hey, let's go no sugar, no flour for 30 days. The reason for that is because I want their body. Those, those are two big things that cause a lot of inflammation in people. And it's not that it's carbohydrates that are the problem. It is the processed carbohydrates specifically. So what I'm looking at is, can we remove these and watch what happens to your food cravings? Watch what happens to your brain performance, watch what happens to your energy stability throughout the day. And at the end of that 30 days, you get to decide, do I like how I feel now? Or do I want to reintroduce that? Because I've had clients that have knocked that out and have stopped getting headaches every day that they have been dealing with. And I mean, try doing anything creative with a headache. And so at the end, it was just such an easy choice for them to be like, no, thank you. So that's one way is I do just like to say, let's cut that out for 30 days, then decide how you feel about it then. And if you want to add that back in, we can try and see what that looks like. The other approach is if you're just like, I'm not into cutting it all out, but I'm curious about it is I have them keep a food log specifically. And I have them record any unwanted symptoms that happen after each meal. 
So we often don't recognize that our body is supposed to be light, content, and satisfied. So within one to three hours after eating, if you are feeling bloated, if you have stomach aches, headaches, loss of focus, energy dips, you're hungry again right away, joint pain, all of these things are red flags that what you're eating is causing inflammation. And we look for trends. Oh, I noticed the last three times you ate eggs, you got headaches after. Oh, I noticed when you eat dairy, you get really bloated. And then we start to make those really individual assessments based on repeated data we're seeing. Okay. So usual suspects being like processed white flour. Yeah. Like that's really- whole wheat flour too is a problem okay. for some people. Yeah. That's a great point, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. that idea that um, a banana is a carbohydrate, but that's very different from a donut. <laughs> It is. And at the same time, it's really interesting because you can have one person eat a banana and another person eat a banana and them have totally different responses on the inside of their body. So one of the things that can lead to inflammation is rapidly fluctuating blood sugar levels. So when we eat things that are higher in carbohydrates processed or not, our blood sugar goes up. So what goes up comes down, energy goes up, energy goes down. So we're really making sure of looking at, yes, there are the problematic foods. And that's when we're talking about things like sugars, usually problematic. Gluten is problematic for some people, dairy for some people, eggs, you know, alcohol, all of these things would be problematic. But at the same time, then we're looking at once we get beyond those, how does your body feel after each food? And that's when I find the broccoli and the quinoa thing for me. So I love this idea. So we need to like kind of listen to how we feel after we eat, not necessarily what we're craving or while we're eating, but actually after we're eating, when our body has got its metaphorical hands on the food, right? <laughs> it's like, all right, we got this thing now that you just ate. Now we're trying to deal with it. And here's your feedback. And that's kind of a, a cool way to think about it. Yeah. Like what did my body just tell me about what I ate maybe 20 minutes ago, an hour ago? Is that, that's sort of the direction? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's always our first line of defense is looking at actually what's working and what's not. It, okay. It's so important. I think we left and gloss over that and yeah. just think that because we downloaded it on the internet or our friend is eating this way that it'll work for us. But if we're constantly evaluating, we'll see like, oh, well, I feel better like this. And it makes things a lot easier to stick to when you're feeling better versus it feeling, you know, torturous to stick to for just some arbitrary reason that you chose that random, you know, set of food rules. Right. Oh boy. And aren't they random? They're yeah. everywhere. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. And what did you say? I really loved what you said. You said our body is meant to feel light and satisfied. And I missed one. Content. Content. So yeah. light, satisfied, and content is the natural state of being for our bodies. Yeah. I like after a meal, if you can do down dog from yoga, that was probably the right amount of food. And you're probably feeling pretty good. Like think about the last time you had a really big pasta meal. <laughs> I, I don't want to be this. doing down dog after that. That's how you can usually tell meals are too heavy. Well, dang, I'm going to do that with my kids later today. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can do downward dog after a meal, that was the right amount of food. Yeah. So I probably won't eat for the next three days and then I'll try downward dog and we'll see if I can hang on. Yeah. Does that work? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I definitely am suffering from the, Hey, I think the weather's changing. I think it's fall. Should we just eat apple everything? I think we should. Right. So it's so funny. That's why I'm cracking that joke because I feel like there are cycles. I don't know about you, but I feel like there are cycles. I definitely go through where I'm really wanting the heavier, like you said, the more sugar, the more processed, like ooey gooey comfort foods. And other times I have zero desire and I'm like happy to eat salads all day long. Do our bodies go through cycles like that as well? They sure do. And it usually lines up with your hormone cycles. I find this such a fascinating field of biohacking. So if you're essentially looking at eating according to your own biology or biohacking with food, we naturally go through as women hormone cycles that are, you know, on average 28 to 32 days, our hormones aren't static, but if we look at how our culture around us is designed, it's designed in a 24 hour day, our workouts, are all expected to be the same intensity. We're supposed to eat the same amount of food every single day. We're supposed to have the same productivity every day, but we all know that there are certain weeks of the month where we are not feeling our best and we're not feeling most energetic and our hormones have to do with our food as well. So what you're talking about specifically, like wanting something carbier or a bit heavier or a bit more satiating that usually comes in the last 14 days of our cycle, because our body naturally starts burning more calories. We have a natural increase uh, in appetite and that feel good neurotransmitter serotonin starts to drop. So we try to make ourselves feel better 
by eating a little more carbs because carbs eventually turn into serotonin. But that is actually a real thing. And it's you're experiencing with your hormones as part of your cycle. So absolutely what we need, our intake, our calorie intake, all of that fluctuates throughout the month. Wait a minute. You just said something really cool. So carbs turn into serotonin. Mm -hmm. Is this why everybody who's on a no carb diet gets so grumpy? <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but I have some friends who've been doing it. I'm like, you might want to eat a chip or something. Cause oh my yeah. gosh, like, is that a thing or yeah. Carbohydrates yeah. can be a precursor. So it, it's, it's in the front of the chain of actions that happens to create serotonin, right? That's why we naturally crave those carby foods. But in terms of the mood swings that happen to do with a very low carbohydrate diet, usually is just that adjustment from our body switching fuel sources. Because I think there's a, a guy named Dr. Jason Fung, and he gave this beautiful analogy. If we always eat very high carb diets, it's like going into your refrigerator, opening it and getting your food out of there meaning it's easy to access. It doesn't take a lot of work. You just walk over, take it out, put it in your mouth. Right. But when we reduce the amount of easily available fuel in the blood, and I'm talking about those, those easy process style carbohydrates are, and that's kind of the equivalent of like that fridge being empty. And now we've got to go in the freezer and it's a little more work and you got to take the food out. You got to thaw it and then you got to cook it. And it's a lot more work, but that's what happens when our body starts accessing fat for fuel instead of sugar, it's harder to access. It's quite the metabolic process to go through. However, when we don't know, when we no longer rely on that short-term carbohydrates, then we can start accessing that. So what you're likely experiencing when you're talking about people going through those mood swings is them, their body switching fuel sources. And in the meantime, experiencing that drop in serotonin. Okay. No, this makes a lot of sense to me now. I think there's a couple of people I'm going to call when you and I are finished with this podcast, because holy cannoli, I think you just blew my mind a little bit. That was amazing. Oh, that's wow. So here we are. It's so great that we're having this conversation because not long ago, and it happens often, but there was one moment with one of my clients really recently where I was like, okay, we need to talk about this. Like, this is so serious that she was suffering from really bad headaches. Like she, it was knocking her off her game. Like she just couldn't get it under control. And she met with um, a health coach who said, really, you got to pull out the sugar and, and the flour, the processed flowers. Let's see what happens. And immediately the headache stopped. She was so much more productive. And she said to me, literally during our call, she said, I have come to understand that my health is my number one asset in my business. And I was like, thank God, because I really believe that. And so I love that we're talking about this. I'm so grateful you're bringing your expertise to all the girlfriends out there listening because you guys, your health is your number one asset in your business. All right, so now that I've pounded that in with you, Tanessa, with all of your brilliant knowledge, I wanted to know what are some of the biohacks we can really sort of implement like actionable things that we can implement specifically. I think sleep is a big one and stress is another one. What can we do? What kind of hacks do you have for us that we can actually go out there and start using? Yeah. So let's talk about stress first, because you know, it's funny. I talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and while they're like, I'm not stressed, I'm fine. But does this sound like you? And if it does, you're probably feeling a little more stressed. So you get done at the end of your day and you didn't get done everything. So you're just like, Oh, it's, it's fine. I, ha I have to, my family's home. I have to turn off the computer and you kind of go and you're making dinner and you're thinking about all the stuff you have to do or stuff you didn't get done. Then you finish making dinner and you collapse onto the couch to watch Netflix, but you're really not focused because you're also scrolling on Instagram. And then you get this panic thought that what if I'm missing something at work? Work, quick pop onto Gmail, but I won't answer that because I'm not working. And then you're thinking about the email. Like we all do this. So mm -hmm. even though you may not think you're stressed, if your body is always thinking that it's at work, yeah, your nervous system is going to be out of balance. And stress is hands down one of the biggest killers of energy. Meaning if you are finding that you are extremely drained, dropping off around 2 PM or waking up tired, we need to look at your stress. So one of the things I love to talk about with my clients is not what activities they are doing to unwind, because like, we all love the idea of a bubble bath, but I'm a mom of an <laughs> under two right now. Bubble baths are not happening right now. So we have to be a little more practical. So I like to teach this concept, um, about called a cognitive load detox. So our brain gets loaded during the day, right? We get input from either the light on our screens. We're having a conversation. You're listening to this type of content right now. Think about the load. We actually need to take time to take the load off of our brain so that it can perform properly the next day. 
So how we do that is by understanding how our brain works. So right now, while you're listening to this uh, podcast, or we're having this conversation right now, your brain is in a state called beta. Your brain waves are going at a certain frequency. And we know that this is happening because you're probably alert, you're focused, you're thinking about what I'm saying. Maybe you have some questions and, oh, I wonder about this. I wonder if I could do that. And your brain is doing this. This is called beta. We love being in beta brainwave state, especially in our business. This is what makes us very productive. However, we need to be able to turn off and not just say I'm turning off actually turn off. And that does not have to do with the activity. It has to actually do with the frequency of your brain waves. So I love the concept of shifting from beta and spending time in alpha. Now, alpha is a bit of a slower brainwave frequency and we are relaxed. There is looser focus. So think about kind of like if you were relaxing on the couch for me, it'd be watching modern family. I've seen it before. So I know what's going on. I don't have to pay too much attention. It's a loose. I'm not distracted by what's going on. I'm focusing. I'm present. I'm just hanging out. Now, where we get confused is thinking that there are certain things that are relaxing and certain things that aren't. So here's a good example. Think of um, reading a book, but you have a business book in your hand mm. and you have out your two highlighters and your pen and your sticky notes. And you, you've got a notepad open on your phone and you're like, this could be good content. People need to know this. I, I have to, oh my gosh, that mm-hmm. feeling in your brain while you're reading is not relaxing. So right. reading a business book before bed, not going to do the trick. Now, what I'd like to offer as an alternative is something lighter for reading. Yeah. So think about like a a fluffy romance book or just a light fiction book. Or I had a client, she's like, I'm reading gardening books, Tanessa. I was like, excellent. That sounds light and fluffy. So it's not about the activity that you do because you can see reading can be both, but Mm -hmm. it's how you feel during it. So if during your downtime, you are not leaving feeling recharged, refreshed and well-rested, you are likely not spending time in alpha. And that is how you can tell the difference. And if you're not spending any time there, it's going to manifest as anxiety, overwhelm, tension, and feeling, you know, that you're moving towards burnout. So how much time do we need to spend in that sort of like relaxed, happy, right? It sounds like too, I love when you said modern family, I immediately thought Ted Lasso, like that say like the happy stuff, like it's easy. It relaxes you. How long do we need to stay in that state in order to really like give our, our brains the relaxation it needs to be able to be great the next day. Yeah. And you know what? I love starting with something doable because I mean, ideally, yeah, we don't like to have evenings off, right? But it depends how many people live in your household and how much work you have to do that night. So one of the ways I really like to start, I will just, okay, I've got another call coming up. Where am I feeling my tension right now? How am I feeling? Breathe. Just take a moment to check in. And so I like to start there because once you can take your brain out of being a human doing and productive and schedules and client calls and emails, and you can take a moment just to be a human being again, you really get to just take a moment to just, okay, slow down. I need to slow down right now. So that's where I like to start. But beyond that, I like to put in little 15 minute increments. Like we all have that 15 minutes before bed where you're taking your makeup off, changing your pajamas, um, brushing your teeth. That is such a great time to just allow your brain to stop thinking about work. And I do that by setting up very protective boundaries with myself. I'm very firm. I even will say to myself, we're not thinking about work right now. Uh, I'm not going to go on my computer So thinking about it is not helping. I need some time off. And so spending that time, instead of brushing my teeth, thinking like, if I only can get through three more things tomorrow, then blah, 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 blah. No, I'm just brushing my teeth and I'm keeping my brain where I am. I'm feeling my toothbrush in my hand, spending those moments feeling feeling present Mm. and mindful. And I think it's not about how much it's about, is there contrast and what is that balance? Because my balance of doing and being is different than yours. I find I thrive a on doing a lot of doing with a, with a moderate amount of being. Some people need to be a lot more, especially at the beginning, but I find it's finding that sweet spot balance. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's right. So does, are you a big fan of meditation too, then? 
I don't meditate. I'm like the black sheep in the biohacking world. I really am. But you know what? I get the most luxurious, high quality sleeps. Like I'm regularly scoring 95 and up on my sleep scores. So I feel like I get my Zen when I sleep. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Okay. So that's where you do that. But for people who do meditate, it is like that contrast, right? It's really about pulling in those moments of like, um, your brain's off. Like, I love when you said, I want to feel my toothbrush. I'm just doing what I'm doing. The thinking brain is off, right? Like the planning brain, the strategy brain, the, oh my gosh, this would be great brain. All of that gets turned off. And as long as there's a few moments of contrast there, you feel like that's a great way to get our brains ready and to release some of the stress. Like you were saying, this is a biohack to help us release stress, right? Yeah. And I use how I'm feeling as a gauge of if I'm doing it okay. Because if I sit there and brush my teeth and then I still feel completely wired at the end, then I probably didn't tune out. But one of the, one of the hacks, the fun bio hacks that I will give clients specifically that are struggling with understanding how, how, what do you mean relaxed? What do you, what do you mean refreshed? I'm always on. And that's so common among entrepreneurs. Um, I actually found in a textbook, um, it's the book is if you, oh, if you love biohacking, it's, it's a book and a half. It's called boundless by Ben Greenfield is a huge book. Okay. He actually mentioned just literally a one-off liner of this app called brain FM. Okay. And I'm writing this, this down. <laughs> yes, I want you to picture this. This app is effectively an, a remote control for your brainwave frequency. So you know how we talked about beta is alert and focused. Alpha is relaxed, getting a bit of the, you know, the chill vibe. So this app plays certain frequencies in the background of the music. You can't hear it, but oh. our brains love to sync with things. Now this is different than like focus music that you'd find on YouTube and stuff like that, because they have they have some kind of patented note bots in there or something like that. But essentially I put in my headphones at the end of the day, I hit relax and it's about within five to 10 minutes. I can feel my whole body shift out of beta. It is the most fantastic feeling. And I use this as a resource to have my clients be like, Oh, that feeling, because if you've been up and doing for so long, sometimes we forget what it feels like to just be off and yeah. slow down. So this is great. And the app is fantastic. It also has a channel called focus and my goodness, it literally that if I need to sit down and write like a six letter news, a uh, newsletter sequence, that is what I put on. I'll bang it out in like an hour and a half, two hours. And I feel like flames fire out of my brain. You've <laughs> never felt more productive than when that's on, because that's because it entices your brain into beta. So this app is great for all kinds of uh, brainwaves on demand. That is so cool. That's really cool. What was the name of the app again? Brain FM. All right, you guys, you heard it here. Brain FM, go get it. That sounds incredible. Now, is that the hack that you really want us to start using when it comes time to sleep and really help us sleep? What about people who, this is me. Hi, I'm asking for a friend. When um, I fall asleep super easy, but I wake up almost every single day at two or three. And sometimes not all the time, but sometimes I literally can't go back to sleep. Do we have anything wonderful for that? Oh yes. You're talking to the right crowd here. I have (laughs) that exact same struggle sometimes. So there can be a couple things going on with that. One is that your body does not feel safe in that your brain does not fully turn off. So I know when I wake up at those times, I'm usually like, like I wake up with a bit of like a faster heartbeat and I'm awake and my brain is very on. And one of the tricks that I like to use in those moments is really reminding myself like, Tanessa, your body is safe right now. This reaction doesn't make sense. The fact that we can't fall asleep right now is not a, is not a natural thing. We're in the middle of the night. My business is safe. I'm safe. Everything is okay we can breathe. And I often find that we need to decondition that middle of the night, wake up with being wide awake and alert. And usually it's because our body is fully charged because our brains weren't fully relaxed. So that's number one, as I like to do the second thing, which I find is kind of interesting. I was reading an article and it referenced the idea of us running out of melatonin too early in the night. So melatonin is kind of like a buzz ish word kind of in the health industry right now. Melatonin is a hormone that we naturally have, and you can also take it as a supplement, but how melatonin works is when our eyes start perceiving 
the daylight decreasing. So think about standing outside on a summer night and it's blue sky. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, a little pink and then it goes orange and then it goes red and then it gets dark. That decrease in light signals our brain, oh, we need to sleep soon. We should probably start ramping up some melatonin, right? And we get that luxury, luxurious amount of melatonin so that it can help us fall asleep and stay asleep. Now, here's the problem. We spend all this time before bed staring into our devices, our phones, our TVs, our computers. There is a type of light emitted from our screens called blue light. And our brains think it is the middle of the day. So we turn off these devices and try to go to bed, but our brain is like, hold on, we haven't had time to make melatonin yet. Like where, I thought, where's my sunset? So we turn off these things and then our brains either fall asleep and then wake up later on because we didn't get enough time to produce enough melatonin or we lay there having trouble falling asleep, which is a lot of people as well. So one of the hacks that I love to use is I have invested in a pair of blue light blocking glasses, but not the ones that 95% of us own. These glasses have red lenses on them. And what they do is the light that enters our eyes is red because it's coming through a red lens and it simulates sunset. So how cool. Yeah. So I put these on about 90 minutes to an hour before bed. And I then make sure overhead lighting is off because our brain is sensitive to thinking overhead lighting is day. I'll put on some lower lamps. I'll put these red glasses on and you can literally feel your body start to get drowsy. And it is literally, where do we get these amazing red lensed glasses? Yeah. So honestly, there's a whole bunch of companies. I get mine from true dark. Okay. There, I have a, there, there's a really, uh, it'll make you look like you're on Mars kind of pair on there that are a full wrap around. Like if you want a hundred percent light blockage, um, I have a pair called, I think they're called the twilight sunsets okay. and they're red at the top and they go to yellow because I like to read before bed and it's a little hard to read through the intense red. So it gives, when I look down at my book, I can still see it, but literally after I put these on, I can feel my body dropping into relaxation. And that is melatonin telling us, Hey body, Sunset happened, Let's sleep go. should come soon. And by the time I'm ready to go to bed, my melatonin is game on. Oh my gosh, this is like the best tip ever. I'm so, I'm totally getting these like right now. Like as soon as we're done with recording this podcast, I am running and getting myself some of these. I can't wait to report back to you too and let you know how this works. Cause I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty amazing. Oh my gosh, yeah. this has been amazing. I'm so grateful for you for coming. And my cat just shook his um, neck. Thanks bud. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm so grateful to have you here. I am really sure that our audience in listening to this, you guys, you've got to pay attention to your body. I love, I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit. My favorite parts are really listening to what your body says about an hour after you're done eating. Make sure you can do downward dog. I'll try that next week. And, um, and then also this idea that we can release the stress by putting our brains in alpha, making ourselves happy. And then this idea, I'm getting red lens glasses, like right this very second. I'm so excited. So Tanessa, as this has been so cool, can you share with us? I believe you have a free gift for our audience. Can you share that with us? Yeah. So if you're like, okay, I, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of feeling tired, ready to start feeling energized. What I've done is I've actually seen the 12 biohacks that I use with my clients that seem to move the needle the most for their energy. And I put it together in 12 ways to biohack your energy. So it's the best of the best, like brain FM is in there along with a whole bunch of other cool ones. So if you head to Tanessa shears.com slash energy. You can download that there and get started. You only really need to implement one or two to start seeing a change. And then as you get the hang of it, another one and another one. And before you know it, you have a supercomputer in your brain and you're just like, yes, this feels good. I feel energized. I love it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I can't wait. You guys, you have to get that. The link to that download is underneath this video. If you're watching us on YouTube or it is in the show notes of the podcast, wherever you're listening to our podcast. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Anyways, I really suggest you go and grab this. Tanessa, thank you again so much for being on the show today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I had fun.
and she's also the host of Beyond Budge. Sorry. Let me try that again. And she's also the host of the... Be- yeah.